Well, thank you all for coming tonight. It's a big crowd, and uh, I'm happy to be here to uh, talk about my work that I've been working on since 2008. Uh, it's a series on Coney Island. I'll give you a little bit of a background, and then I'll proceed with the, the work itself. So uh, basically, uh, back in um, uh, Coney Island was always, I grew up out in California, so I knew about Coney Island, but it was this far off place, and I'd seen pictures and movies of it, but never had been there until I came in 1997 to take a documentary class at uh, SVA. And uh, during that time, I would go out to Coney Island and check it out and thought it was really awesome and interesting and uh, started photographing it then. And to me, it, it felt like it was, uh, you know, probably many of you know the experience as well. I'm sure you've been here a long time. It was sort of this 20th century spectrum of time. It was frozen in that period of time. Well, then come to like early 2000s, 2008, because I, I ended up staying in New York, uh, around 2008, many of you probably remember that the, uh, there was a lot of talk about redevelopment of the area. So I got very interested in, at that time to uh, go back out and photograph and actually document what it was like before the changes started to take place. So uh, with that in mind, um, I had a, a camera at the time, but I also happened to purchase the Diana camera. Uh, actually, now I can begin the, the, the series, and then I'll tell you a little bit as we go along. So that gives you the background. So here we go. So at the time, there were some articles. Maybe you remember some of these articles. I would often pick up these on the subway, you know, the metro. So the basic thing at the time was, you know, how glossy was this place going to get? Because there was a lot of talk about redevelopment and changes and making it. At the time, we were, you know, thinking about uh, 42nd Street, Times Square. Was it going to be like Times Square? Or, or how much of the old grit would be able to be maintained? So there were articles. I would see these articles. They were even talking about casinos, putting in casinos at the time. So what was the future? So I was thinking about recording as much of the past as possible. And at the time, I had picked up a Diana camera. And uh, how many of you know about the Diana camera? Yeah, a few of you have shot with it. Yeah. So you don't know what you're going to get with the Diana. But uh, I thought it would be an interesting camera to go out there with because it sort of was kind of like Coney Island. You know, it was kind of plastic, kind of basic but kind of uh, intriguing and, and, and gritty and kind of like you just don't know what you're going to get actually and there's a lot of uh, light that leaks in and, and so on. So if you actually notice here, you, you just turn it around here to get the different settings. Is it one to two meters away, two to four meters or four meters to infinity? And then at the top, you can make your adjustments in terms of how much light is getting through. Is it a sunny day? Is it a cloudy day? And so on. So there's, it's not digital at all in any sense. It's just very basic. And those levers often turn when you don't realize it. So you might not be properly prepared for your image. But when you are prepared, when it is right on for the image you're taking, you can get some really amazing images. And uh, so I went out there. The other thing I should mention about this camera, it's a medium format film camera. So it's a square image, a larger negative than a 35 millimeter negative. And uh, so you get more information, more detail. So here we go. This was, I, oh, I should mention too that when I decided to go out, it was around April 2008. I decided to, for some reason, I wanted that misty morning kind of experience because I was feeling melan melancholic about the changes that were about to take place at Coney Island, uh, the sense of loss and memory and just how I was feeling. I was sad, and I thought, I just felt going out on this time would be of interest. And so this, first, this was the first time I went out, and I took a bunch of these images and you'll see it. Um, Persephone, yes. You, like, what made you want to discover or rediscover Coney Island? Well, because I was seeing those articles in the paper and uh, uh, about uh, changes that were going to take place, you know, making it more like uh, 42nd Street and, uh, uh, you know, Times Square. 
And so that was disturbing to me. And um, I just wanted to explore what was there all along before you know, they tore down the buildings and tore down the, some, some of the rides and just kind of captured that previous moment before things changed. So if you go now, a lot of what I shot is not there. Of course, the Wonder Wheel is there and the, you know, the, the um, Cyclone is there, but a lot of those buildings will go back. Uh, like these, a lot of these buildings are gone, you know. Uh, this, this area, like that sign, Astroland and Frank's, this is totally different now, totally uh, a different scene. So I was interested in just capturing that period in time and just connecting with it, actually. I'm open to any questions along the way, actually, if you want to ask. So, um, what time of year was it? So this was April uh, 2008. This was all on a, a particular Sunday that I went out there, so it was very quiet. And uh, it was, um, you know, no one was around. <laughs> Not too many people go out to Coney Island at this time of the year, uh, unless you live out there and know the routine. Uh, but, it, you know, it was foggy, Sunday morning, very quiet, you know. And that's an interesting time to go there. You know, there's no one around except there are some dogs, like Rottweiler dogs in the, in the fence, behind the fence, keeping, you know, an eye on the situation back there. So what happens, well, this is the cyclone, of course, and uh, even this has changed over the years. Jeffrey, where were you born and raised? Well, I was born and raised in Cleveland. We moved when I was 13 to California. So uh, I knew about Coney Island and, and, you know, Cleveland and California, but hadn't been there until I came out that year, 97, yeah. Um, so Coney Island was this place that just had an imagination about. That's right. You know, Woody Allen, uh, movies that I had seen, pictures that I've seen, and certainly the name Coney Island. I mean, I, I think people around the world have a sense or an imagination about Coney Island. And you know, it, it's been on the, world, on the imagination of many people around the world since, you know, since it's first started happening in the mid to late 1800s. Uh, you, you know, once the trains started to go out to Coney Island, people would go out. And at first it was the ride, I mean the, the beaches, and then the rides started to happen. So, um, so then... Do you remember as like a young girl yes. that I gotta get to Coney Island, like people say I gotta get to Paris, or I have to get to, you know, Canossi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was a, a simmering f an, uh, idea, and then by the time I got here, you know, to take that program at uh, SVA, the documentary class in that summer, I was like, I gotta get out here. I have to check this place out. You know, it was a very exciting thing to do. And I find this to be the case because, you know, since I've shot these, uh, I've met a lot of people. I, I told them about my work. Uh, people know about Coney Island or they wanna go to Coney Island. And, you know, this is around the world. I actually had a show in Paris and they were all very familiar with Coney Island and very interested in learning about Coney Island. So I think it's, it resonates with a lot of people. I don't think it ever, people ever tire of Coney Island, believe it or not. <laughs> you would think they might, but it's too unique. And I think that was the biggest fear about the redevelopment was that were they going to like do away with what's so interesting and unique about Coney Island. And I think they haven't at this point, but they could get there if they keep it up. Uh, but I think there's a, a, mech, a mix still of the old and the new at this point. But it, it could lose its thing. The only thing is I, I do find that people that go there now, they're into what's going on now. And so that in and it itself is creating a new energy, uh, a, new, you know, a new movement. But uh, anyway, again, I thought it was important to go and document. Like, this is not there anymore either. Uh, Old, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 54 inches. I wonder if I, if I'm, if I make it, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm actually 60 inches. Yeah. Yeah. This is, these are all, I, I will say these are all that same outing. I took several roles. I was like having an awesome time. It was one of those times when you get out there and you're shooting and everything kind of comes together. 
and you're, you're in the zone and you're just happy and you're shooting. So these were all on that day. But I have gone back since and I'll show you some of those images as well. But this is from that same morning, yes. So this is when I talk about the light leaks that happen in the Diana, uh, this can happen easily because light can, because when you roll that, the film back up and you remove it, uh, it doesn't necessarily roll that tight. So you might get light leaks when you take the film out of the container, out of the camera, or maybe through the camera you can get light leaks. But I do, I did tape it up. I knew about that and I taped up the camera on the edges to prevent as much as I could. So of course, this view is no longer as well. I don't know if anybody who's been out there in the recent years, but it's much flashier and uh, candy stores. And the Coney Island name is still there. Yes, the Coney Island name is still there, for sure. And there's no sugar. I know, right? That sugar candy store? Sugar is like yeah, I know, I know. I think it's a Popeyes now, but that's way Yeah, better. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was also on the same day. It was just one of those, uh, I was just having a field day. <laughs> of course, I didn't know what I was shooting because it was film, and you don't know what you have, and if you're doing it right, and it's a new camera. Uh, so I was pleasantly surprised. So this I shot years later. I went back. Uh, I've gone back over the years, and uh, I first went back in the same notion of fog and so on, but um, it definitely had a different feel for me because you can see there are new rides, uh, particularly like this ride over there and the Thunderbolt and uh, this ride over there too. Um, so it's, it's a different vibe. <coughs> And that's also uh, later, shot later in time. Same camera? Same camera, always with the same camera. This project is with the same camera, yeah. And also with the same camera, yeah. So then I, thank you. Stephanie, you sell prints of these? I do, I sell, yeah. And I've been in some shows. Can they find it? Yeah. Well, uh, you can contact me. Uh, you go to my website. I, I'll have information. Do you but have a no, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a nice consideration. Thank you. I am. Uh, I've been in some shows, and uh, um, actually, uh, I sent a series to the one a recent show, and I got honorable mention. So that was a nice thing. But uh, yeah, you know, it's something to work on. Um, at the time, uh, by the way, I have 50, 70 rolls of film that I haven't developed yet. <laughs> so it's still, I still working, I'm working on it. But uh, at the time, I, I uh, went to a place, you know, on 21st, uh, I don't even remember what it's called. I don't think it's there anymore, actually. Dugal? Not Dugal, no. It was one of the smaller places on 21st. But I've since been going to, um, uh, LTI. Perfect. Okay, you're happy. But the thing is, is it's a very expensive, unless someone can help me with a, a special deal there, because I've got 70 rolls. So I'm... Roll. Yeah, but I... Well, we can talk about it, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> but I'm thinking of doing it myself, because I like to, you know, be able to do this on my own, and I, I teach at ICP, and I have access, you know. Uh, so, anyway, but I don't print it uh, myself at this point. Uh, I find that I, you know, enjoy developing it in Photoshop and printing it. So the reason I'm asking yes. is this is a, a positive, obviously, yes. from your negative. That's right. So how the result we're looking at, what were the stages? What the okay, okay. So it was pro the, the film was <coughs> processed, and then I scanned it at a high-resolution scan uh, at ICP, where I have access. And then from the high-resolution scan, I then... Uh, you know, made my adjustments in Photoshop. So that's what I did, yeah. So the, the positive that you, the digital? Yeah, 
I tra yeah, it became a digital process. Yes. Yeah. Good question, Bethany. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Oh, we're running out of time. Okay, we're running. Uh, almost done. So this was I started to explore other other seasons and kind of get into the into the Coney Island spirit. So that's on the beach. And then at night, that's a whole nother energy in Coney Island. Nathan's, some of the, the, the games. And then on the boardwalk, all kinds of Puerto Rican dancing and ladies with tattoos. When's the last time you were back, sir? Last summer. Oh, last summer. Yeah, yeah. But, I, you know, I go throughout the year. And, uh, but I, it's true, I haven't been back since last summer. I found the night shooting, too, to be very interesting with the camera. You know, if there's enough light, you can get, and that's handheld, you know, with like a 400, yeah, handheld. Because you have no control, right? No, I have no control, and I don't know what I'm going to get. So a friend of mine actually used my image on her, the cover of her book. She's a Jungian analyst. Her name's Fanny Brewster. And it's about African Americans and Jungian psychology coming out of the shadows, mm -hmm. or leaving the shadows. Yes. And then a shout out to PDN. I was in a, a book uh, series that they did on New York back in 2010, and uh, and I was chosen on the front and back cover of the book. Nice. So thank you, Bravo. PDN. Bravo. Yes, thank you. So that's it. Thank you.